everyone and thanks for joining us again on this week's agronomy alert. Today I have with me an agronomy account manager here in the Elders location, Mr. Aaron Trimcamp. Aaron, how you doing? Good, how are you? Not too bad. Also have with me today are Winfield United, CDSM, and also River Valley Co-op Regional Manager, Mr. Jeff Lodes. Jeff, how you doing? Hey, great to see you, Don. Today we're going to talk a little bit about fungicide. So Aaron, you know, when you're talking to your customers right now, what are you to when it comes to so some of the stuff I've been seeing in the fields as we uh, as we near the uh, uh, tassel application of fungicide I'm checking fields uh, seeing a little bit of crown rot starting to show up due to all the wet soil conditions of spring um, a lot of anthracnose on the lower leaves um, again from all the wetness uh, some of the corn as is behind us we're looking at it's about five collars from tassel which is about two and a half weeks from, uh, from tassel showing up so we're getting closer to that um, this is some April planting corn um, but I would say the uh, May planting corn is not very far behind, maybe a collar or two at the most. So, so as we get near the back half of July, we'll probably start seeing some uh, some fungicide applications taking place. So, Jeff, when it comes to you know your agronomic you know, expertise and with a you know specific focus on seed, where should customers be looking when it comes to what seed to apply the fungicide on? Sure. No, a great question. So you take this year where you. Just take a step back and 2019 has really required us to really break our fields out in three different groups you know we definitely have those farms that t took the blunt of spring of 2019 and, and really a lot of water stress but yet on the other side of that there's still a lot of farms that are that we're really chasing some pretty good yields so with, with those fields that were chasing pretty good yields you start to look at response to based off the hybrid that's in that field and and from our research there's a lot of great scientific data behind the scenes breaking hybrids into into three different groups again uh looking at you know from a, a low fungicide response that we're you know not seeing much return on investment most time those those hybrids are pretty, uh, can, can take a lot of stress and they're, they're pretty healthy. Yet to other hybrids that they still may have that same health uh, and, and good disease tolerance, but they have significant return for that uh, return on investment for a fungicide application. Seeing a, a, a two or a three to one return on investment for the fungicide that we apply in our fields at BT. Gotcha. So, Aaron, so to kind of piggyback off that, you know, so basically, you know, you're not only looking to apply fungicide could have disease, but if they're not Well, probably the first thing I'd look for is, is the is the hybrid, um, the response to the fungicide on the hybrid. Um, secondly, is it corn on corn? Um, we typically see bigger responses on the corn on corn side of things. Um, I would say even more so this year, uh, the corn on corn fields had a tougher struggle, uh, a little bit tougher. Just the emergence wasn't near as fast and as uh, rapid as we see on bean stubble. So I'll probably be looking at those fields first um, to, to make sure and make a good application on them and, and a higher response on the corn on corn um, just because you have inoculum left over in the years past that tend to lead to more disease pressure. Right. So when it comes to products, you know, what are you talking to customers about? Um, main products would be the titanium or the laurel had really good responses. Both have a uh, curative with a uh, preventative with it, so you're not only curing anything that's on the plant, but you're also preventing it for the next couple of weeks to get it through grain for the time. So, Jeff, do you have any comments? You know, what what should they be in the tank with that? Yeah, so great, great question. So you, you always think back to really what the net purpose of fungicide is. We're really trying to protect that plant from the ear leaf on up so that that factory that's still there that's as healthy as possible and it can really, you know, help with uh, an, an overall kernel development. So you look for products that, that are going to give us that maximum coverage down through that down through that canopy. Even this year with the canopy being a little bit shorter, you still think about that ear, le ear leaf is further down into that canopy. So we're looking at products like Master try to gain that additional coverage all the way through the top half of that plant. Yep. So, the spring and, and summer, are, you know, we had a lot of late planted corn, so I, I imagine there will be some fungicide and whether it's a, you know, so what, how, do, how are you hoping on the conversation? Misconceptions I always say of fungicide is, is that it makes my crop water. It's going to take longer to dry down. Where I see it the other way, yes, it may make it a point or two wetter, 
but that isn't a significant enough difference for the advantages it gains. We have better standability. Uh, last year, under more normal conditions, we had a lot of corn go down, and where we had fungicide applied, we had a lot better standability. So right there, it made Some of these plants, you know, are going to need a fungicide just to have standability because if we have this crown rot and this anthracnose, those are two that affect the rooting. So if we get late winds in October, uh, we could definitely see a lot of down corning. So that's where I'm, I'm at. Yeah, and I know, you know, with River Valley specifically, we have developed a, a, a calculator that can look at a hybrid and the GDUs so that it would need to black layer. And you can calculate in, you know, with the fungicide application, if it does, you know, increase that moisture a little bit, you know, we can also provide some propane and we can calculate out, you know, you're still getting a benefit by putting in the fungicide, even if you have to buy a little more propane. Yeah. The other thing right now, generally speaking, we usually see about 12 bushel increase on uh, fungicide as an average, anywhere between 8 to 20. So right now it takes about 7 bushel to make for application into these cotton prices. So um, to me, it's it's kind of protect what we have. Um, we have a crop. Uh, some of the rest of the United States on east is not as fortunate as we are. So we have something to sell at the end of the day. It's a great day. Yep, no doubt. Well, Jeff, you got any more? You know, any other comments you'd like to touch on? Before yeah, we wrap this thing up? I think prior to the the last piece is talking about that early corn plant, right? So you look at the overall disease triangle, and and oftentimes, you know, in in years we're looking for disease somewhere in that v10 to, to vt type of time frame um, and it's it's very different this year that now all of a sudden we're starting to scout for disease during that same during that end of june for beginning part of july but our corn's march shorter right so to be able to uh actually see some north on some v5 corn is very common this year and you look at that disease setting in at these smaller plants how that affects the overall just nutrient uptake as soon as you start to disturb the vascular tissue inside that plant and start to limit nutrient uptake going through that it, it's potentially going to be a major major uh, effect on us like aaron said later on through through harvestability and 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 just overall uh looking at kernel depth and, and kernel fills so it, it's really something to to think more about what's going on uh, during the, the dates that we have rather than actually the growth stage because that corn is your date than normal. Stuff that's really growers mind and 